Hey guys, Adam here with AmericanMuscle.com. Today we're taking a closer look at and installing the VZ style front chin spoiler for the 15 and newer Challenger. You should be checking this out if you're looking for a nice wide body look at the front end with a race inspired aerodynamic looking chin splitter. Now this guy is super wide from both sides here. It comes with twin supporting rods for the front end to attach it to the bumper and it comes up pretty far past your Challenger to give you a nice aggressive look. Now Vicrez or VZ is known for making wide body kits and aerodynamic pieces like this one. So if you're looking to complete the kit, they have side skirts to match as well to bring it all the way around the side of your Challenger, but we're just taking a look at this for now. Now this guy is made of a sturdy ABS construction, which means that it's impact resistant and it's made to handle taking a beating at the front end of your Challenger like most aftermarket exterior appearance parts are. Now this ABS plastic is covered in a textured black coating here, which just gives it a nice characteristic. I like the detail of the textured black and I think it looks a little more aggressive at the front end. Now if you wanna customize it more, you can take it to a local paint shop and have it custom paint it to a color of your choice, but out of the box, it's just a textured black. This guy comes in right around 400 bucks and it does require some drilling so I'm going to call it a soft three out of three wrenches on our difficulty meter. All you guys have to do is have the proper drill bits on deck and a little time and patience and you can get this done yourself. Now if you're not comfortable doing drilling which let's be honest some people aren't and that's okay just make sure you're taking it to a professional to get done properly. You want to make sure you're evening things out on both sides because you don't want it to be off on one side or the other and once you start drilling there's no going back. I'm going to show you my steps and my method for the install. I'm going to take you through every step of the way, but just know there's many ways to skin a cat so you can do this however you see fit to your personal preference. It'll take you about two, maybe three hours from start to finish. What do you say we get started? All right, tools recommended for this install include an impact gun, we have a drill, quarter inch ratchet, seven, eight, and 10 millimeter deep sockets, universal swivel socket. I used a Phillips head socket, but you can also just use a Phillips head screwdriver, T30 Torx bit, seven millimeter wrench, center punch, panel removal tool, paint marker recommended, needle nose pliers, Phillips head screwdriver of course, a variety of extensions with one long one, also a tape measure and a drill bit set. Now the first step here in order to get our front bumper off is to pop the hood. We're gonna remove the two radiator shroud panels. Now they are separated underneath that hood latch. So I'm just gonna head underneath here, lift this guy up and pull it aside. Same thing with the other one. Now I'm gonna use a panel removal tool. You can also use a flathead screwdriver. And we're gonna remove every other one of these little plastic push pin clips. Now these guys are holding on this front bumper panel. Now this is all attached to the front bumper and that's being held on here. So you can see this one and that one's underneath so we don't need it. Then we'll do this one, skip and move along. Same thing on the other side. All right, now still under the hood, if you go all the way to the corner where the bumper meets the fender, on the inside, you can see a stud with a 10 millimeter nut. Now, it's at a weird angle and it's deep in there, so it can be difficult to get to. I'm using an impact gun, an extension, a swivel socket, and my 10 millimeter. Now I'm gonna go in here at an angle and just set this guy over the stud and get this guy off. All right, so we got that guy off. And if you do drop it down in there, it's not convenient, but once we get the bumper off, you'll be able to get it. All right, so now we can do the same thing on our opposite side. So we have our Challenger up in the air a little bit more and I've got my passenger wheel turned inward to expose this inner wheel well liner. Now we have a couple of push pins to remove here, but ultimately we're trying to get to a stud that's attaching the bumper to the fender. And that stud's right around here facing that way. And it's got a 10 millimeter nut on the end of it. So what we're trying to do here is get that wheel well liner opened up. We're gonna grab a couple of extensions and Frankenstein some stuff together to get to that guy. Now it's gonna be tough to see, but I will tell you it's right about here and I'll show you guys that process as best we can. First, grab your panel tool and remove these clips. All right, so now we can peel this back. Now before we can go back into that stud that's connecting the bumper to the fender, we have one T30 Torx screw holding this guy in from the front. 
Now I'm gonna use an extremely long extension. You can use multiple connected together if that's all you have. I have a universal 3 8 swivel joint along with my 10 millimeter deep socket. I'm essentially gonna go in through here and it's gonna connect to right about there. I'll take that nut off, reach my hand in and grab it so it doesn't fall through. All right, so I have my socket locked down on there. Got that backed off. Now I can reach my hand in and unthread the last few. All right, so now you can repeat this exact same process on the other side. We got our Challenger all the way up in the air. We're gonna remove our skid plates or the belly pans. There are two of them separate. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is grab our seven millimeter socket and remove all the screws along the front chin spoiler. From there, we have a couple of push pins, a few bolts, and then we'll work our way back. There's a couple of layers to remove. So grab your impact gun or your ratchet and remove the seven millimeters. Next up, I got my panel removal tool again. We have three of those plastic clips here, the push pins. So we're gonna remove those guys and then move on. All right, so now I got my 10 millimeter socket. We have two 10 millimeter bolts right here, just behind where those plastic clips were. All right, so I'm pulling out the panel tool again. We have one more push pin clip in the wheel well here, just tucked underneath of that lower control arm. Then you're gonna repeat this on the other side. From here, we can remove the first panel. Now this guy is tucked under a few others, so we are gonna have to finesse it a little bit and pull it straight back and set it aside. From here, all we really need to do is go to our wheel well where our bumper is and pull out like that. The same thing on the other side and then lift from the front and pull the whole bumper off. All right, so I'm immediately gonna set this guy down so we can disconnect our fog light harness. Now there's one master harness that leads from both sides of the fog lights to one connector. So that's up here on our passenger side. So you're just gonna pinch and disconnect. Now the bumper is completely free to put on the table. All right, so we got our bumper off the car. It's on the table here and it's actually sitting on top of our VZ style front chin spoiler. Now when you line this guy up, you wanna make sure you're taking extra caution, taking extra time, really you know, going slow and making sure it's done right. We've got our measured outside here. We've measured out this side here. Same thing on the other side, so they're dead even. And that's exactly what you wanna do. Then you wanna go around to the front of the bumper and make sure that the Vicrez logo is dead center with where the bumper meets at that point. So we have that all figured out. We don't need to show you guys us using measuring tape. You know how to lay things out. So we've got that taken care of. I have a paint marker here, which I think is gonna be your best friend when it comes to lining this guy up and making sure that you're staying on point. We have the sliver of chin spoiler that comes through the back end here. I marked that with the paint pen and the same on the other side so we know exactly where to put it. Next. We're gonna take advantage of the pre-drilled hole already on our bumper. I'm gonna mark that with our paint pen to drill through. Same thing on the other side. And then I'm gonna move in a little bit, do one here, and then here, same thing on the other side. So really you're just making sure you're repeating yourself. We have 10 self-tapping screws given to us in the kit, and we're gonna take advantage of it. Now, of course, where you do your drilling, where you line this guy up and how you secure it to the bumper can be personal preference. You guys can drill into different locations if you'd like. I'm just showing you my method. So what do you say we take our paint pen, we're gonna take our center punch tool and get started. All right, so here we have that pre-drilled hole on the underside of our bumper. I'm gonna take my paint pen and mark the center there because that's where we're gonna know that we need to drill. Now this larger hole off to the side is for your water drain. Now each car has a drain tube on both sides to let water run through. You can drill that out if you'd like, and if you want, you can mark that hole right now. Same thing on the other side. Now one of your best friends in this is gonna be a center punch. That's gonna help you guide your drill bit into position so it doesn't dance around here. And I'm gonna use that to mark the center of the paint that we just marked. So again, just before you move forward, 
confirm that you are even on both sides still, it can be pretty easy to bump the bumper and uh, offset it. Same thing on the other side. Now this one's got a fog light in the way, but. So from here guys, what we're gonna do is drill out the holes we just marked with our paint marker. I'm gonna use my quarter inch drill bit there. That way our splash shield can still be bolted up using those seven millimeter uh, screws that we removed earlier. So we're gonna drill those holes out and then get to work on our self tapping screws. Now this isn't gonna be our permanent solution, but for what I'm, right now what I'm gonna do is just take a bolt and a nut along with some washers, and I'm just gonna bolt this together through those holes I just made. That way we can hold the splitter exactly where we know we want it, and then use our self-tapping screws to secure it, and then I can come back and remove these. But this for now, we'll just hold it in place. All right, really simply, while we're here, let's just knock this out of the way. We can uh, drill a hole for our water drain tube. Now, the fog light's a little in the way. I'm going at a bit of an angle. I've already got my hole started, and as you know, we used our center punch earlier. Once I get this hole started, I can go in from the bottom and clean it up. So, that's what we're gonna do from here. Same thing on the other side. Next up here, I got my paint marker. Now I can mark the holes where I'm gonna drill my pilot hole for our self-tapping screws. Now, I know it sounds silly to drill a pilot hole for self-tapping screws, but what I'm actually gonna do here is mark it on the underside. That way I know exactly where this is gonna go through. Now you can see that the chin spoiler is curved, so we wanna make sure we're still hitting that plastic on the other side. So by marking the paint and drilling through, I actually know exactly where those holes need to be, so I hit both pieces of plastic. Let's do that now. So I'm gonna mark one here closer to the edge up right around where the sticker is. Probably actually gonna go right through that thing, right there. I'm also gonna mark one right above uh, that bolt back here. And then two more before I get to the edge. Now I know that this is about where that plastic starts, so I'm gonna go back farther and then in between. good. So now I'm using a really small bit here. It's like 5 fourths, and I'm going to go through. Now I can't really go straight down on this marking that I made, but I'm going to go right below it so I know that my bit is straight. Now you can just repeat that on the other side.
All right, so now we have the entire bumper assembly on its back so you can see the bottom. Now, as you can see, we have a nice uniform line going here with our self-tapping screws on the sides. We do have two more from what was included in the kit. You can, of course, source more if you wanna add a couple of more just for added support, but the ones we're using in the kit are plenty. I'm gonna put one right here and one right there, and you can use this Vicrez logo as a guide. Just go a couple of inches on that side, a couple of inches on this side, and then we'll be good to start installing the wings. So I'm just using my Phillips head screwdriver to get this thing started, just so I know it's gripped and it's not gonna dance around. Once I have it down to the threads, I'm gonna switch over to my impact gun with my Phillips socket and tighten it down. All right, just doing the same thing on this side. Next up, we can talk about these little wings. Now there's one on each side and there's two pre-drilled holes along with two holes on your chin spoiler. Now this guy is essentially gonna go just like that and it comes with L brackets. So I'm gonna bolt the L brackets to the inside just like this and there's another one here and then we'll bolt the L bracket to the actual spoiler. Now they give you a couple of screws and nylon lock nuts. So I've got my screw head going through the outside so you'll see the actual screw head and not the nut. And I'm gonna tighten down the nut on the inside here by hand at first. All right. Now let me put the other one on and then we'll come back here with a ratchet and socket and then we'll start attaching it here. All right, so now I'm gonna line this up and I'm gonna put the screw head through the bottom. Yeah. And then the nut on the inside. All right, same thing on the bottom one. Now we can grab a wrench and a Phillips head and tighten them down. Once you have it lined up where you want it, you know, flush with the edge here, grab a seven millimeter wrench and hold the nut like I'm doing now and use your Phillips head to tighten these down. All right, repeat that for the other side. At this point, we really have one more thing to do before we can throw the entire assembly back on, and that's install our rods. Now the rods are, you know, again, personal preference where you put this, you can put it as close to the middle as you want, you can put them out wider past your grill, it's really personal preference. I'm gonna go from the edge of this word on the right, so it says VicRes here, I'm going from the edge of the Z out six inches, and then maybe a half inch up, and then on the other side, I'll go six inches out from the edge of the V and a half inch up. So make sure it's even on both sides. So I have six inches laid out here, I'm gonna mark this just about there, and I'm gonna use my center punch to mark my hole. All right, same thing on the other side. All right, so now we can drill and our stud will sit right through there. And then from there, we'll mark our hole up here, rotate this joint here, put the stud through as well. All right, so now I've got my 1364 drill bit. I'm gonna drill through this bottom portion. All right, so now I'm gonna take one of our rods I have the nut taken off of it. I'm gonna put this stud straight down and put the nut on the opposite end. Now I'm not gonna tighten it down with a wrench just yet. I just wanna hold this in its place so we can see where we need to drill upward. Now with this here, you wanna make sure you have it completely straight and you wanna make sure you're at the angle at which you want it. So naturally it wants to go there I'm just gonna make sure it's straightforward, and I'll mark my hole here and then drill into that. Same thing on the other side as well. So you wanna make sure that you have your bumper in the position it will be on car. So instead of sagging it down, make sure you have it back upward 
You wanna make sure the stud is flat up against the body, going straight through and not on an angle. All right, so that looks like a good position. I'm gonna hold that there. Just replace that with my center punch. And go straight in. And you can just double check it, of course, before you do anything. So flex this up, just like that. Looks good to me. Now we'll repeat on the other side. So now we can drill our hole, same size as the bottom one, and put our studs through. All right, so now you can take your drill and go straight through. Take the, so good. Hold on, I can't get this off. I can't get that off by hand. This one I can though, I'll do this. All right, so now you can take the nut off the other end of the stud, put the stud through, and tighten it down from the backside. All right, same thing over here. Now I'm gonna grab my eight millimeter deep socket and tighten down both of the studs. All right, so now we have the bumper on the ground ready to go back on. We have to focus on our harness first from our fog lights. So reach back under to grab that factory connector and we're just gonna plug these guys in. So now we're gonna lift the bumper back into place. You can use these panels as guides to go right on. You wanna be careful though, because if you remember, we have that stud connecting the bumper to the fender. Now you don't want that guy to hook around the side and scratch your paint. So be careful where you're doing this. If it makes life easier, grab a helping hand but it can be done by yourself. All right, so I'm gonna stop here and then go side by side. Perfect. So now we can take the side and snap that panel in. Now the first thing I'm gonna focus on here just to make sure we know the bumper is secure is to focus on the studs up top under the hood here that go fender to bumper. I'm gonna use my hand to get this guy to just lay on over the stud and just try to thread it on a couple of turns before we get our socket. All right, so now we're gonna hit it with our socket and impact. Same thing on the other side. All right, so now we got this back up in the air a little bit. I got my wheel turned inward. We're basically putting it back together in reverse order. I've got my nut here. Remember, we're gonna go back to the stud that's connecting the fender to bumper. All right, so now I have my long extension, swivel, and my 10, and I'm gonna tighten that down. Now you can take those black push pin clips and set them back into place for the wheel well liner.
All right, so now you can repeat this exact same process on the other side. All right, so next up is gonna be our splash shield. Now in order for this to sit properly, I took the last two self-tapping screws out, two from each of the edges. That way this can sit flush and we can screw that through again and then through the splash shield. So what we're gonna do now is slide this guy into place and I'm actually gonna bolt it up from the middle here with the two 10 millimeter bolts just to hold it in place and then we'll work on all the seven millimeters. All right, so now I'm gonna put those 10 millimeters in. Now grab your seven millimeter screws and we're gonna set them all across the ends. Now remember, we drilled this one out in our chin spoiler, so we're gonna go through there. All right, so now we can put the self-tappers back through. All right, so now we can put the three push pins back here and then head back under the hood to finish it up. Last couple of steps, let's put our push pins back under the hood where the bumper connects to the rad support. All right, last but not least, let's put our plastic trim in. You wanna do the passenger side first, snaps in there and then sits down. And then the driver's side goes into the side as well. And then you can flip it underneath of the hood latch. From there, shut your hood and you're good to go. Well, that's gonna wrap up my review and install for the VZ style front chin spoiler from VicRes available for the 15 and newer Challenger. And if you're looking for that aggressive race inspired look at the front end with a wide body appearance, this is a great way to go. You can get yours right here at AmericanMuscle.com.